Hi, everybody. Ed Bixby here from the Global Green Burial Alliance, uh, welcoming you to another Spotlight Now with my co-host Gretchen Spletzer. And we have a couple of wonderful ladies here today from Australia. So Gretchen, take it away. Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm here with Ed, and we're interviewing Tamsin Ramon and Alyssa Wormald from Heaven and Earth Echo Burials in Australia. Uh, Tamsin Ramon, Tamsin and, and Alyssa share a passion for green burial and the ethos of going back to the earth naturally and gently. They live in the outer eastern suburbs of Narm slash Wellborn from, for most of their lives. And they grew up in the foothills of Denong, Mount Denong, right, uh, country. Um, they were raised to care about the planet and animals and, um, and these values have very much persisted. Alyssa is a dedicated animal activist, heavily involved in campaigns to protect native wildlife. Tamsin is passionate about trees and protecting old growth forests. She assists in multiple campaigns and fosters the occasional greyhound or guinea pig. Both of them believe in living with as little impact as possible on the earth and with its creatures. We are, they are both mothers and uh, have an experience of being stay at mo home moms and support other moms in small businesses. Um, they're proud to provide a range of cruelty-free, biodegradable, sustainable, and customizable burial products. And uh, they make some beautiful shrouds. Their website is uh, www.heburials.com.au. So uh, if you want to check out their website, even while we're interviewing them, you can see their beautiful products. So hi, uh, Tamsin and Alyssa. Nice Hi, to be with you guys today. And Ed. <laughs> Hi, Ed. Thanks, Ed. Very so, nice um, to see you, ladies. Yeah, the last time we were together was on an international panel with the Beautiful Dying Expo, so it's been a couple years. So how is um, how is business going, you know, since we talked last year? I mean, you guys are still going, obviously, and I see also on your uh, Facebook that you're holding Death Cafes monthly, too. So just uh, let us know, tell us how we, how you guys are doing. Yeah, we're going really, really well. Um, we're doing the death cafes bi-monthly, so it's not every month. We did have a couple, um, two months in a row because we wanted to squeeze one in before Christmas. But we, um, we've we been hosting those a lot, doing quite a lot of presentations um, in like local libraries and community houses. And um, yeah, heading up some markets and stuff and getting out and about and trying to spread the word about green burials. Great. So, so ladies, let me ask you this, uh, for the audience to, uh, to know, I mean, what is the, uh, what is the temperature like? Meaning like, what is, what, what do the communities know about natural burial in Australia and, and how could the uh, global green burial Alliance, uh, help you guys spread the word? Um, look, I think that, there's been a lot of work done in Australia um, by different businesses and organisations over the past sort of decade. And I, I think that they've done a great job raising awareness, but there's still so many people um, that just don't even realise that green burial is an option. And often that we've found that when when you tell people, um, you know, they're, they're pretty amazed that they never never knew that they had that, that choice. Um, and so... Look, I think there's definitely, you know, we need something big to really wake up broader amounts of the population because it, it is getting out there, but we need more people to know so that they can be requesting this and that, that will then get the Cemetery Trust to realise that they need to um, offer more availability for green burials. Um, so it's been there has been heaps of work done and we are seeing, like, particularly where we live, uh, we, we're pretty spoiled for choice in terms of, um green burial options um compared to other parts of Australia and that's because we've had some of the key um activists or key businesses that have been based in Melbourne um so that yeah we've, we've definitely got more than other parts of Australia but it's coming along and um 
yeah, I think just the, the education and trying to, to reach as many people as possible because we do find that when people know they want that choice and so many of them go, oh, I would have done that for this person, you know, they would have loved that. Um, and, yeah, so I think that there's, um, you know, people want that choice. I also think that what they really need here in Australia is conservation burial because that's something that's really lacking at the moment. Uh, we've got people who are working really hard to try and make that happen, but they're finding that they're facing years and years of red tape, massive expenses, just trying to set up, um, you know, a bush bushland burial. Um, so at the moment, mostly what we have is hybrid cemeteries, so um, a green burial section within a conventional cemetery. Um, or uh, sort of small conventional cemeteries that will just let people be, you know, buried more at a shallower depth in a shroud. But, you know, that's sort of the amazing conservation burials that they have in the States and the UK and um, and all that is something that we would love to see here. And there are lots of people that are working really hard to try and make that happen. So fingers crossed. I wonder why, the, why there's so much red tape to make that happen, especially since... It seems like the need would be so obvious with the um, the fires and stuff that you you guys have had that more conservation would be more priority. So you wouldn't think they would make you wait as long to get through the red tape, you know? I think so, but I feel that I feel that there's a bit of um an outdated attitude here. Um, when it comes to conservation and um, particularly with things, you know, with burials and, and that sort of thing, it seems like they're really holding on to a lot of the 18th, uh, 19th century sort of sanitation concerns that aren't really such a big problem anymore because, you know, we're not cramming people into these inner city graveyards. You know, if we're having a nice place out in the middle of nowhere, I think that they can... Um, maybe be a little bit more flexible than they are. But I think it's just one of those things where it just needs to happen. Like once there's been a couple of people, um, you know, a couple of successful examples mm -hmm. um, that we'll see, you know, it really proliferate. But it's just been those trailblazers have had to work so hard um, over years just to get the first ones up and running. And, and hopefully they'll they'll be you know, in operation soon and, and that will show others that, you know, other councils and, um, you know, the Minister for Health and everyone who is in charge of these things that it's viable and it's a good option. So yeah. think I, wonder, I, I wonder if there's a, anybody doing, like who owns private land out in the bush that would be open to doing a natural bury or natural cemetery. Yeah, like unfortunately, that? it's just it's still really red taped. So you wow. can do in nearly all of Australia. There's, I think, um, uh, was it? I think Western Australia or Northern Territory. You can't, but you can do burials on your own property. Mm. But it's a huge, like the the amount of paperwork and red tape you've got to wade through is just crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, so locally where we are in the council that we are in. You can do it, um, but you're probably looking a good two years to try and get it approved. Um, and you have to have at least five hectares of land and on, then you can only bury people on it who have, like, lived on it or are, like, you know, connected to that family. So you couldn't just open it up to be, a, you know, a natural burial ground. Um, it has to yeah. be the people who... Uh, in that community there is actually a community um quite local to us that's uh what is it what would it be called Alyssa more and more it's like a more and more, um intentional community yeah like, so uh, all the families uh, have come together and they live on uh, a couple hundred acres and you know they like live sustainably sustainably and stuff and they're actually trying to bring like have a graveyard and natural burial ground um be approved on their property uh, and that's probably the closest thing we've got sort of going on. But again, it can only be people buried there who are, have lived or are connected with more and more a community. Well, so, well, I mean, you know, what we all know is that anything worth having is worth waiting for. And, and, and you know, it, it takes, takes the squeaky wheel to get the grease. And what we need are more advocates like yourselves to continue to make the noise because 
ultimately they can't ignore it, in particular when there's power in numbers, when you have people who are desiring it. So I know that you guys will achieve it. You know, you're a little behind uh, the United States and the United Kingdom because of, you know, it just hasn't been something that people have presented. So now that you're presenting it, you'll get what you want. And and what I'm really curious about is, you know, your products, if you could talk a little bit about your products and, and how they fit into the hybrid model, which appears to be the easiest path at the moment. Yeah. Um, well, we currently offer three different types of shrouds. So our shrouds are all just one size, one size fits all. And they really do. Like there is, there is shrouds that are available. They say one size fits all, but um, one of them I saw, I'm like, my dad wouldn't fit in that. So not one size fits all. Um, as we've, I have shrouded pretty much everybody I know. All my friends have been shrouded. <laughs> All of our family has been basically shrouded. Everybody gets shrouded. I meet a new person. I'm like, hey, can I shroud you? You're quite tall. <laughs> um, but they, yeah, so we've got this one size and we've got three beautiful fabrics. We've got a, a organic cotton. And then two different types of bamboo, a sateen and a fleece. And they're all just really lovely fabrics. And they're, we did put, and I say we, it was Alyssa, put a ridiculous amount of um, research into the fabrics to try and find the most eco-friendly fabrics we could. Because um, every fabric has got issues. Like they're all, you know, they're, none of them are going to be 100% environmentally friendly. We were trying to find the ones that, that did the least amount of damage in the long term uh, and particularly, um, you know, most um, environmentally friendly here in Australia, which is where we're buying and, and selling from. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we do have the baby sizes as well there um, and child sizes. We also sell um, a simple carrier, which is just yeah, this board down the bottom here. Um, it is just a very thin, uh, very sturdy piece of plantation pine, which is then wrapped in organic cotton. It's got jute handles and it's been um, independently engineer tested to carry 150 kilos. So that is all that's required for burial, for a natural burial in a hybrid or even non-hybrid cemetery here in Australia. Um, and then we've also got our, our accessories. I've got our um, biodegradable neck pillow that's made from corn fiber instead of polyester. And we've got um, just decorative ties, so plain and patterned ones as well. Beautiful. Yeah, aren't yeah, they beautiful? Wish I yeah. could touch them. <laughs> well, that's, that's a, a good point, Gretchen. So I think I did hear you, Tasman, say that, that uh, is this just solely for uh, the public in Australia, or do you do any type of sales outside of Australia? Look, we haven't done anything outside of Australia. We have looked into it a bit. We had um, some potential uh, customers in New Zealand, and we've also had, where was the other one also? Was it Argentina or something? Yeah, I feel like it was somewhere in South America. Yeah, South America somewhere. Um, we haven't actually gone that next step of selling international. So we did originally decide just to keep it Australian, um, just trying to keep the, you know, the carbon footprint down basically. Um, right. So we haven't sort of branched out past of that at the moment, but it is something that's on the radar sort of, you know, we've had interest in it in other countries, um, but it's not something, not somewhere we have gone yet. Yeah. Understood. Do you sell to um, funeral homes or or do you just sell to the the clients who want them or both? <laughs> um, so we, we do mostly sell direct to funeral homes. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So we actually, when we first started out, we were really keen to mostly sell direct to the public, but uh, I don't think that Australia is quite there yet. Um, and yeah we just found that most people aren't sort of pre-purchasing funeral products and you know it's much better to um, have them on offer through funeral homes that you know because we've got some great funeral homes here that specialize in green burial um, and they're able to offer our products um, to families when they come in and so that's been that's been really great um, so yeah that's predominantly what we do out and through wholesales. Does yeah. Australia have death doulas? Yeah, we sure do. So yeah. do you sell do you sell to them too? 
We have actually before, um, just one, um, but we can do, yes, absolutely. So, yeah, mm. we can really sell to anyone, but if, you know, we do do wholesaling, so we wholesale businesses um, and then we can sell retail to, you know, we don't do a lot of retail, like Alyssa was saying, but we can if, yeah. if that's what's wanted. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, ladies, uh, so what drew you to it? I mean, you know, most of our, we ask a lot of our uh, our guests, you know, what brought them to the movement or what, what was the, the desire? So, like, uh, do you have any, any experiences that you could share with us that, you know, moved you towards natural burial and creating shrouds? It was Alyssa. So she uh, she answered this one. It was all Alyssa. I just came in with the, oh, yeah, I'll do that with you. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I'm happy to talk to that. Um, so I'm, I was, I really, I feel like so many people have gotten into this, uh, this line of work because of Caitlin Doty and we're, we're, we're one of them. Um, but I was just obsessed with her Ask a Mortician channel and I'd just been watching heaps and heaps of them. Also, cause she's a medievalist. I'm a medievalist. Um, and yeah. And, and there was one on green burial and it was quite, um, shocking I think for for me because you know we were raised very environmentally conscious and I had no idea about this I'd never even given it you know one second of thought I thought that there was cremation or burial like you know conventional burial um and so it sort of blew my mind and it was so obvious like when I thought about it I thought oh god why do why are we doing things the way that we're doing it so unnecessary and it's actually so you know there's these alternatives that are actually so much better in so many ways like environmentally but also like holistically and um, emotionally and everything um, to be able to to have these other options um and yeah I was just over at Tamsin's house with my baby and visiting her babies and talking about this video that I watched and we started looking into what was available here. And we saw that there was like a pretty established green burial movement here, um, but that the shrouds that were available were coming in from the United States. And we we thought, oh, well, it would be nice to have something that was made locally. So we sort of went into it looking at what we would want for ourselves. Um, and from that, it just sort of extended into, um, yeah, making shrouds that could be sold to others who might want something similar. And yeah, and so we actually have our own shrouds as well that we've that we made, you know, initially. And like Tamsin's got a very pretty tie-dyed one, thanks <laughs> to my friend. Um so and and we just had a lot of fun with it from there, like finding local craftspeople, uh, finding other mums in business that we could source as, you know, business associates and manufacturers and you know, just trying to keep it all as local as possible. Um and yeah, so it's just you know, one of those things that you talk about, but it it did actually become a reality for us and you know it's become such an overriding passion for both of us as well just to talk to people about it because it was so um revolutionary for us to know and we figured there's so many people who are like us and consider themselves environmentally minded and really care about the planet but then when it comes to end of life they may be having a send-off that just totally doesn't reflect those values purely because nobody ever talked to them about it and they never knew that they had any choice and their family never knew there was any choice so yeah it's just yeah we're so passionate about it for that reason are you, are you, are you getting a lot of people coming into the uh, death cafes that you know are reachable that are just having the conversation we love our death cafes they're so fun oh, that's <laughs> good. great I know it's such a great subject I mean you can talk endlessly about every aspect of death and dying from the products to the spirituality to, you know, how to do it and the different religions and how they do it. And just, it's endless. Yeah, totally. And I mean, we, we do find that we get like a varied sort of audience um, to our death cafes, uh, except for our, our one regular Jules who comes to all of them. We love Jules. Um, and but we, we do tend to get much bigger numbers. Like usually our death cafes are fairly intimate. Like I think probably 12 is the most we've ever had. Would that be right, Tam? Do you think? Yeah, I'd say it's about right. Yeah. But whereas when we go and do presentations, you know, we can pull a decent crowd for them 
Um, and then like the markets, like we found doing eco markets um, that, you know, we reach so many people because, you know, that that's sort of the, the target audience that we're really wanting to educate and they're so interested. Um, and, you know, we'll end up just on our feet talking all day long at these yeah, markets. There's, and, there's no lunch breaks for us. <laughs> Yeah, and the last one, yeah, exactly. It's like try and shove a cracker in your mouth, like when you get a chance kind of thing. Um, wow. And, yeah, and, and we, you know, one of the last ones that we did, um, you know, we ended up getting two two media radio segments from that. So then it's going out via a, a local media source and also the ABC, which is, you know, the, the big sort of Australian broadcasting corporation. Um, so it just means that you're generating that interest that's great, um, you guys. That's really yeah. great. Yeah. Although we've tried a lot of different markets and it's really funny because, you know, we've sort of found, we found our niche now. We're like, okay, let's just stick to eco markets because we've done craft markets. We've done like psychic festivals, like all <laughs> sorts of things. Yeah. And then we're like, yeah, okay, let's just stick to eco. <laughs> that's good. Though. Well, yeah. absolutely. Well, you know, you, you got, you two are truly an inspiration, you know, uh, thank you for the work that you're doing in Australia. Thank you for uh, doing the spotlight now so we can introduce you to the public. Uh, I do encourage anyone watching this uh, that we are an international organization. So please do uh, take the pledge either as a provider uh, or a consumer. So any of your uh, Australian counterparts, you know, some of the funeral mm -hmm. homes that are, are going to be able to watch this and see you two ladies. Uh, please do become a member of the Green Global Green Burial Alliance. And uh, Gretchen, do you have any more questions for uh, Tasman or Alyssa? Uh, no, just that I'm really happy to see you guys again. I, I want to encourage people to follow them on Facebook, Heaven and Earth Echo Burials. And, um, and just know that if you live in Australia or Melbourne, to reach out to Alyssa and Tamsin on their website. If you are interested in their products or need resources for green burial, they're great for that. Tamsin, I know, writes articles. And mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Alyssa, Alyssa you're, are you the writer or both of you write? No, we, we both do. Yeah, we okay. both do. Yeah. I'm 90% Tamsin. I've done That's a couple. That's what I thought. Yeah. But then no I know what I read on the blog was you, Alyssa. So, yeah. yeah I the nerd, I did the nerdy history one, and I've got lots more where those uh, those are from when I get the time to to write it up. Because yeah, I love looking into the history of the death industry. It's so it's fascinating. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, the, I mean, the most important thing and why we're doing this is to educate everyone about green burial. And Tamsin and Alyssa are just a great resource in Melbourne and Australia, and so grateful to talk to them and hear what's new and. Um, and I guess that's it for us, right, Ed? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so certainly check out Heaven and Earth. And uh, again, check out the Global Green Burial Alliance. And and ladies, you had another website you had mentioned about, uh, what was that about the children? Uh, is there something else that people could oh. take a look at what you're doing? Oh, that's right. Yeah. So on Instagram, we, we do have our sensible business Instagram, at Heaven and Earth Eco Burial Products. But we also have at Morbid Mums which is business stuff, but it also includes the fact that we're both mums of young kids and um, sort of our interesting experience uh, going into the death industry with all these little people in tow. Oh, and um, so just some of the funny things that have come up for us whilst doing that, um, you know, attending all sorts of meetings and product testings and stuff with all these little kids in tow. So, yeah, at Morbid Mums. Uh, if anyone wants to be moms, we have to check that out. And absolutely, that's absolutely. All about. Well, thank you, ladies. <laughs> we we do appreciate you uh, being part of our spotlight now today. Yeah, no, thanks, you guys. Thank you for having us. Yep. Yeah. See you in us. Uh, see you in cyberspace. Absolutely. <laughs> that's amazing.